go over this problem. This is um, 214 out of the Hibbler textbook for dynamics. And it says that we've got, an, at the instant shown, we've got car A traveling at uh, 10 meters per second around the curve while increasing its speed at 5 meters per second squared. Car B here has a velocity of 18.5 meters per second along the straight path here and it's increasing its speed at two meters per second squared. We wanna find the relative velocity and acceleration of A with respect to B. All right, so first of all, let's write out what we're looking for. So relative velocity and acceleration of A with respect to B, that means we want A over B, right? Because that's the velocity of A with respect to B. And actually we're gonna find the magnitude. So let's make it the magnitude. All right, and then same thing with acceleration. So A relative to B. So those are the two things we are looking for. And we're given the speed and then the accelerations. All right, so let's write up here. For car B, the acceleration was two. And then right here for A, it's five. All right. Now notice this is a straight path. This is a curved path right because that makes a difference so we got to keep that in mind let's go ahead and let's do velocity first so let's write out our equation that we use to get relative velocity all right so what we're going to do is write va equals vb plus va relative to b all right and this just comes from the vector triangle this is just the relative motion equation easy way to remember this the variable on top will always be the variable on the left, okay? So if I'm looking for this, I need these two velocity vectors, okay? I need velocity of A, velocity of B. So let's go ahead and let's figure out what that should be. All right, now notice this VA is at an angle, okay? We got this 45 degree angle, so we have to take that into account. Okay, and let's just draw this out so it's easier to see. So here's our x, here's our y, and then let's draw the velocity. So let's just say at point A right here, it's going like this, 10 meters per second, and then we have 45 degrees, right? So that would be 45 degrees on either side. Okay, so let's get um, our velocity vectors. So this was A, and VA then would be a positive x component, all right, so 10, cosine 45, because we want this component here, adjacent to the angle, and the I component, and then the J component's going down, right? So it's gonna be negative, negative 10 sine 45 J. And then these are meters per second. Calculate that, it's 45 degrees, right? So your number's gonna be the same. 7.07 I minus 7.07 J. So that's VA, now I need velocity of B. So that's up here, right? So if we draw that one out, velocity of B is just on the x-axis. So VB would just be 18.5 I. Now we put them together in this equation. VA on the left, and then it's going to equal VB, which is 18.5 I, plus that relative term. Okay, and then we can solve for VAB, so we need to move this over, group it with the other I term here. And we're going to get negative 11.43I minus 7.07J. Okay, so basically we did negative 18.5 plus the 7.07, that gives us this I component here. All right, so now we've got that. We want the magnitude though, right? So just like any other vector magnitude, we just do the square root of the sum of the squares. All right, so just square each of the components, sum those up, take the square root, and we get 13.44, and that's meters per second. Okay. So not too bad. 
And then a lot of times it wants the direction angle for this since this is a magnitude. So usually if you have the magnitude, you want to show the direction angle. So let's go ahead and do that while we're here. So let's just do our Cartesian system, that's x, y. We know the directions for our components. We've got a negative x, a negative y, right? So that means we're, you know, down here somewhere. And the magnitude's 13.44. Let's find this little angle theta. That would be our, our direction, okay? So the way we can do that is basically using um, just a right triangle, essentially. So this up here will be my x component. This one here is the y. I don't need the negatives because we know what quadrant we're in here. And then we can just do the arctangent, right, because it's opposite over adjacent. So theta would be the arctangent of 7.07 .07 over 11.43. So you get 31.74 degrees. So that's the direction of your velocity vector when you're doing A relative to B. And essentially that's the velocity that A appears to have from somebody moving with car B. Now we do the same thing for acceleration. All right, acceleration is a little bit more involved on this one though. And the reason for that is, is because we've got this curvature in the path. All right, so A is on that curved path, so we have to um, consider that when we're doing our acceleration. Let's write out our equation, and I'm going to switch to a different color so we can tell what goes with what. So acceleration of A is going to be acceleration of B plus acceleration of A relative to B. Okay, we want this, so I need to find these two vectors. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's draw out this little frame so we can use it in just a second. Okay, so now we've got that. And let's go ahead, I'm going to start with B first because it's going to be easier for acceleration. So let's just go ahead and, and do this one. All right, so what would our acceleration of B be? Well, it's just two meters per second squared. It's on this straight part of the road, right? So that is just going to be 2i. So that one was pretty straightforward. Now let's go to a. a is not going to be so simple. Okay. I know the acceleration of the car itself is 5 meters per second squared. So if we draw that over here, then we've got this acceleration here, which is 5. Now, that acceleration it gave you, though, that is the tangential acceleration, right? Because that's just the acceleration of the car itself. That has nothing to do with this curvature. Okay, so this is tangential. Now, since I've got this curved part of the road, though, I've also got a normal acceleration, right? So the acceleration of A is going to be the tangential term plus that normal term, okay? So we gotta find both of these to get the acceleration of A because we're on this curved path, right? That curvature is gonna give you that normal acceleration. The tangential term is always just think of it as the acceleration of the vehicle itself. All right, let's do AT and then we'll go and find normal. Okay, and this is a vector. So we've got the 45 degree angle again. Right, positive x, right, because we're in this quadrant over here. So we're going to have 5 cosine 45i. Negative j, because we're going down. So negative 5 sine 45j. And that equals 3.54i minus 3.54j meters per second squared. That takes care of this part, but now I need the normal. Okay, so the normal is going to be where? Remember, it goes in towards the center of curvature, right? So that means it's going to be over here. Okay, and then, you know, we got these 45 degree angles. 
This is a n. Remember a n, the equation is v squared over rho. Okay, so that would be the magnitude of that normal acceleration. So let's go ahead and use that. So remember for a vector, you take the magnitude times the unit vector. Okay, so let's just leave um, v squared over rho for now, and we'll plug in the numbers in just a second. Let's get the unit vector for this line. All right, we're down in this quadrant, so we're going to have a negative x. So we'll have negative sine 45i. And then we're in the negative j direction, right, because we're down here, pointing downward. So we'll have negative cosine 45 j. Okay, so now we've got that. And now let's plug in our numbers for v and rho. So v at this point for car a is 10, right? So we're going to have 10 squared and then rho is the radius of curvature. What do y'all think that is? I'm thinking it's right here, right? 100. Okay, so we get 10 squared over 100, that obviously goes to 1, and then once you calculate this, you get negative 0.707i minus 0.707j. So then our normal acceleration just ends up being negative 0.707i minus 0.707j. So now we got this. Now we can combine these together, so group up the like terms. And let's see what we get. So we're going to have 3.54 right here, minus 0.707, gives us our I term. And then for the J's, we have negative 3.54 and then minus 0.707. These are your J terms. All right, so calculate that. We get 2.833i minus 4.247j, and that would be meters per second squared. All right, so now we've got this, we've got this. I can find that now. And notice we can solve for this, right? It's just going to be um, acceleration of A minus B. So let's plug those in. So here's acceleration of A. So 2.833i minus 4.247j minus acceleration of B, which was just 2i. So group up the like terms. So you'll have 2.833 minus 2, right, which is just going to give us 0.833i minus 4.247j. Okay, so this is our vector form of that relative acceleration. And we want to find the magnitude. So we just need to do the square root of 0.833 squared plus negative 4.247 squared and that gives us 4.33 meters per second squared okay and then again sometimes it wants the direction so let's let's do that let's draw this over here that's x that's y let's look at our vector here All right so a small positive x component a larger negative j component so it's going to be like down here that'll be 4.33 and let's find that theta all right so if we look at that doing something similar to what we did up here we'd have theta is the arc tangent of 4.247 over the 0.833 and that gives us 78.9 degrees. So it makes sense that that's almost 90, right? Because this component here, this Y component is much larger than this. So it makes sense that it, you know, it's almost 
at that Y direction there. All right, so that's how you do that one. Key thing on these problems is you have to remember to pay attention to your path. Okay, so on this one, the tricky part is you have to know to do the normal acceleration. If you don't do that, you're missing out on um, quite a bit of the acceleration. So something to keep in mind. Hopefully you all like that one. I'll see you all next time.